Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. This week, Colin, you've chosen to do a series on the spiritual armour of God. Um, now, I suppose some people might ask a question, armour of God, what has this got to do with us? Well, I suppose um, Paul's description of the spiritual armour in Ephesians chapter 6 is pretty well known by Christians, but it's also greatly misunderstood and actually misapplied in their lives, as I will show you this week. Uh, what I'm going to do is, first of all, read the uh, from my new translation, which will be published and available next year, because I've tried to bring out the real meaning uh, that Paul is wanting people to understand about this spiritual armor. So let me read that first. Above all, be strong in your faith and dependence on the Lord, on his might and power. He has provided his protection for you in several ways. Clothed with his gifts and resources, you will be able to stand against all the devil's disruptive tactics. Your battle is not against people, but against the negative spiritual forces that influence and control them, against the spiritual rulers, authorities, and powers that are at work in this world that is in bondage to the darkness of sin. They are in league with those evil spiritual forces that exist outside the world. So accept everything God has made available to you so that you can stand steadfast when evil attacks. Yes, no matter what happens, you are able to stand firm and to remain standing. You wear the shoes of the gospel so that you are always ready for any eventuality and can walk in peace. Your faith is like a shield that enables you to overcome anything the devil throws at you. His truth is like a belt that you keep around your waist for support. His righteousness is like a breastplate that protects you. The assurance of your salvation is like a protective helmet enabling you to counter all the devil's lies and efforts to deceive you in your thinking. You have not only a defensive shield but an offensive weapon, the sword of the Spirit, which is God's Word. Whenever you pray, depend on the Spirit to lead you and fill your prayer with His life and power, no matter what you are asking of God. How important to pray in the Spirit continually for all your fellow believers. Now, I hear a lot of Christians say, well, I don't get out of bed in the morning until I put on my spiritual armor. I think, well, that sounds crazy to me because why did you take it off when you went to bed? If this is our protection, we need to have it on all the time. And I teach our Bible school students, when I go to bed, I wouldn't take my protective armor off, but it doesn't stop me cuddling my wife. Uh, I mean, we're not talking about plates of metal, are we? We're talking about spiritual realities. Now, Paul doesn't want us to focus so much on the parts of armor as to what they represent. So if I can just give an overview of the whole thing, and then we'll look more uh, in, in, in deeper way at, at each of these things in subsequent days. What Paul is, is really saying is that you have certain spiritual qualities and all these qualities together are your protective armor. And you need to be sure that you are clothed with this armor continually. Now, what, what's, what's he talking about? Well, he says, faith is your shield. Now, you see, it's not a question of somebody saying, I take the shield of faith. No, 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 no. That's not what he means. He means the faith and trust and confidence you have in God is your shield that is able to overcome anything that the devil throws at you. You, you, you know, I, I hear people say, well, I put on the belt of truth. No, 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 no. The truth is not something you put on like a belt. What Paul is saying is that truth has to be in your heart. You, you are filled with the spirit of truth so that you can live in the good of the word of truth. So having that truth is like a belt that supports you. Your faith is like a shield that protects you. The truth that you have in your heart supports you. Then he says, righteousness is like a breastplate that protects you. 
You see, it's not a question of saying, oh, I put on the, the breastplate of righteousness. No, no, no. Righteousness has to be your way, way of life. And if righteousness is your way of life, if Jesus Christ is your righteousness, as we were hearing the other day, then you will be under the Lord's protection. And that which is unrighteous that comes against you will not be able to prevail over you. And then you see he, he is saying, take the helmet of salvation. Now, it, it isn't just say, oh, I put on the helmet of salvation. Salvation isn't a helmet. What Paul is saying is, listen, if you are saved, then you must understand that the word of God, the truth of what Jesus Christ has done for you, the essential truth of the gospel that we have been talking about recently in this program, that needs to fill your mind. So your mind is full. I mean, the, the headgear you see covers the brain, the way you think and the way you operate, the, the sort of the, the, the center of, of operations in your life. So he, what he is saying is that you need to be full of the saving grace, of your faith in the saving grace, your faith in, in the truth of what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross. That will be like a helmet that will protect your thinking. So the enemy, when he comes along with his deception and lies and accusations, you will be able to resist that because you will know that's not the truth. That's not what God says about me. I am forgiven. I am totally forgiven. I'm totally acceptable in God's sight through the mercy and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is no accusation for me. There is no condemnation for me. I don't have to listen to any of those thoughts that come from the devil and not from the Holy Spirit. So this analogy of armor, it's really a case of appreciating the protection that we have at our disposal. Paul, presumably Paul was looking at a Roman soldier or something and using this as his example. Yes, and what he's saying is, you see, that we have all these different things as our protection against the devil's schemes. We have the truth, we have faith, we have righteousness, uh, and, and we have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We've got all, this, all, all these resources available to us. And what he's saying is clothe yourself with these resources. Live in righteousness. Live in faith. Live according to the word of God. And then you will be able to resist all the devil's schemes that come against you. So we really have to understand the resources that God has given us. We're not using them, in other words. Well, you see, if people treat this portion of Scripture in, in a trite way, in a superficial mm. way, you know, I, I've heard people pray, oh, I put on the helmet of salvation and I take, I take the sword of the Spirit that is the Word of God and I put on the breastplate of righteousness. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Righteousness is your way of life. Uh, salvation is your way of life. Faith is your way of life. What Paul is saying as he looks at this Roman soldier is you have all these resources that are your protection against all the devil's schemes. So what he's saying is, walk in the gospel, let your, your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel, then you will be ready for anything. It doesn't matter what happens, it doesn't matter what unexpected things take place, you will be ready and you will maintain your peace. Nothing will disturb or disrupt your peace because this is the gospel of peace and your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So you see, uh, God wants us to walk in peace, walk in faith, walk in righteousness. He wants us to walk in his saving grace. Salvation is a way of life, as we've often heard on this program. So, it, you know, we mustn't treat this as a, flippant, you know, as a flippant way. You know, we take these things off at night and we put them on in the morning. That's not what Paul is talking about at all. Why are so many Christians so easily defeated, though? Is it because they're not doing what you suggest. Well, I think because they have a very superficial understanding of not only this passage, but many other passages of Scripture. They, they don't really understand that everything in our Christian lives is going to come out of our day-by-day -day relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, what is faith? It's a relationship with God. What is righteousness? It's a relationship with God. What is salvation? It's a relationship with God. What is peace? It comes from a relationship with God. 
Everything comes out of that relationship. So what we are to be doing is living in that relationship. And then if we live in that relationship, Paul is saying, well, that righteousness will protect you, the, the truth will support you, the faith will be a, a protection over you, and so on. It, it's, it's understanding that Paul never spoke in a flippant or superficial way about anything. And he certainly wasn't suggesting that what you do is you lie in bed and say, oh, right, today I put on this and this and this and this. Uh, I mean, you don't take it off at night. You don't take righteousness off at night, do you? I mean, you don't take truth off at night. Say, oh, I'm going to bed. I take truth off. I take righteousness off. I take salvation off. So while I'm asleep, I'm not saved. I mean, it's crazy to even think like that. And and if you don't have to put it on every day if you've still got it on. You can just rejoice and say, well, thank you, Lord, that today I'm living in your saving grace. Today I have that shield that is going to be like, uh, I'm, I, sorry, I have faith which is going to be like that shield of protection. I thank you, Lord, that I have your gospel of peace. And no matter what happens today, as I trust you, that peace is going to be maintained. I, I have that salvation. I am living in that relationship with you where I'm forgiven, where I'm accepted, where I'm free. And I don't have to listen to any of those lies of the devil who wants me to feel condemned, who wants to fill me with fear, who wants to try to take me back into my past and say, you are such a guilty failure. No, 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 no. That is not the gospel. We need to keep hold of the gospel. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 